Hi, and welcome to our next section here in our session on evolutionary algorithms here. I'll um, introduce um, what we usually call an evolutionary strategy. So we'll work on numerical encodings. We'll talk about their associated recombination operators, um, how we can mutate them. And then we'll look at, um, I think, two simple examples of applying such a um, numerical evolution strategy. So, um, as I've already said, um, um, we are now in our usual world where our inputs are encoded as um, a d-dimensional uh, vector of inputs. And the main thing we need to get right for our uh, evolutionary algorithm, which we might now call an evolutionary strategy, is how we can recombine two parents, x and x tilde, and how we can then mutate the resulting offspring. And there are um, um, a couple of choices of doing that. So first of all, um, yeah, how does our encoding look like? So a parent is basically a bunch of D real values. Yeah? So we maybe D is five. And then here we have our X. Here we have our X tilde. Yeah? And in each of them, these, these components, uh, which we would call genes of the complete chromosome. And we have a real number in there. Um, and the first uh, way of recombining these two guys through a cro crossover operation into a new offspring is simply uniform crossover. So we choose gene, um, gene J. So maybe um, we are in the first gene and we choose that with probability P from the first parent and probability one minus P from the second parent. And usually we set P to 0.5 because there's usually not a bias towards uh, one parent or the other. So these two guys here would be selected with 50% probability. Yeah, and, and, and then here in this re resulting offspring, uh, in this instance, this guy would have been chosen um, from the left parent. Here, we would have chosen that guy from the right parent, from the left again, and then from the right and from the right. Um, this is a pretty, I don't know, simple vanilla um, form of, of uh, crossing over these two vectors of real numbers. Um, there are also two more, I don't know, geometric inspired uh, crossover op um, operations, which are pretty similar. So there's the intermediate recombination. So intermediate recombination um, simply adds, adds up the two vectors and then constructs the middle point. So um, if you think about these two guys living in a 2D space, uh, then here um, you maybe have X. And here you have x tilde, and then intermediate recommendation would be here. We can also nicely in this uh, 2D visualization now think about what would happen with uh, uniform crossover. So uniform crossover would, for example, be here if you would have selected um, one component uh, from the left parent and one from the right, or we could be here, right? Or I guess, well, we are somewhere here on the corner points. Uh, through random selection, we are somewhere here on the corner points of uh, this uh, cube or hypercube in D dimensions. In intermediate um, uh, places them somewhere here, uh, well, not somewhere, exactly here on the middle of the connecting line between X and X tilde. And then there's also what is called SBX, simulated binary crossover. That's just a complicated name and EA terminology for generating a convex combination between X and X tilde, so in a certain sense that generalizes the intermediate recombination. And you can see this immediately here from the formula, right? So we produce a convex combination from these two guys um, by randomly sampling this beta value here, which tells us where we are on the connecting line, okay? So if we would have sampled a beta of 0.5, we would have intermediate recombination, yeah, and yeah, obviously this is um, somewhere between zero and one. Okay, uh, which generates then a point here continuously distributed, uniformly distributed on this connecting line and uh, uh, resulting in a convex combination between the two original values. Um, how does mutation look like? Um, again, there's a simple form of uniform mutation uh, that chooses a random gene Xi, Xj, and replaces it with a value um, usually uniformly distributed from the feasible range. Yeah, so 
maybe these values here they are all between i don't know um, 0 and 10 and then in uniform um, mutation would cross out this guy sample something completely fresh maybe a 7 yeah? um, from the feasible range and um, plug that in there and we'll do that for one gene or for multiple genes um, um, usually for only a few genes and maybe these are sampled again with um, with a low probability then there's a Gaussian mutation um, this would add normally distributed noise to our to our x so we can yeah, here we've ri actually written this down um, already in, in vector notation yeah so um, yeah this would um, um, yeah, add kind of a, a noise vector uh, usually with a with a lower noise uh, control parameter sigma here um, to the complete vector yeah? so each each element is slightly um, slightly changed by noise um, and then there's polynomial mutation um, that simply uses a different more peaked distribution uh, and there's a paper by Depp, um, it's a pretty well-known author from the field that analyzes uh, different mutation schemes for a real param parameter. And you can see here, he calls it genetic algorithms and evolutionary strategies, um, where out of the analysis, uh, out of the theoretical and empirical analysis, they can show quite well that such peak distributions here perform a bit better than the uh, normal Gaussian mutation operations. So in modern evolutionary strategies very often the simulated binary crossover here is uh, used together with this polynomial mutation um, here's now a very very simple example um, to um, kind of get a feeling for this looks for how this looks like so we have created this here in 1d um, which is uh, yeah maybe a, even a bit too simplistic uh, but I guess Maybe it's a good idea for our, for our first um, EA and um, we'll also only use this uh, with mutation and not with recombination. Um, so you can see here um, um, the ma mathematical test function uh, which is called the Ackley function. Um, um, you can see a plot of this. Um, we'll now initialize that with a population size of 10 guys. So these are the black dots here, just randomly chosen. Um, now we would create five offspring um, um, with, in, in this case without uh, recombination so we just take five of these guys and we mute them mutate them with Gaussian mutation with um, Sigma equals 2 and create new values now we have 15 guys and we have to reduce them again to 10 so we simply take the 10 best of these um, and then iterate the whole thing and let it run. And here you can see now how fitness evolves. And we can actually see that after a couple of iterations, we uh, solve the function pretty well and we end up down here. Okay. 